Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to Chaos TV's live coverage of the Riot Turkey International Invitational number 2. This is day number 2 and it's featuring Ant Gaming vs Eternity. I met this drone by Pulse and we are very briskly into the picks and bans. Yes indeed, and well Eternity, have, well what a surprise mess as they're running a new lineup once again. <laughs> and I looked at the Leakpedia page and it just had stopped after about seven months ago. They just gave up trying to update it every second. So uh, this is a new lineup. We've got Broken Child Mozilla and Nardius and Darker, who you may have heard before. I'm not sure if Ziviz is a Vizigsachi, which would make uh, more sense if it was, but Ziviz is probably a different player. And the rest of them we already know from multiple teams all of these people have been in. Broken Child, very solid uh, jungler and darker as well was in gamma gaming so excited to see him perform in a different team yeah on paper eternity look like individually very talented and gifted players but this is something that we've ran into time and time again in the eus challenger series though pulse that just because players are individually talented doesn't mean they might necessarily have that synergy as a five-man unit so they could be very good individually but whether they'll work together as in unison is yet to be seen yeah, uh, I mean, I spoke to Dyrad during the break to confirm he is Dyrus's uh, Turkish cousin, so they always have that going for them. I would be excited to see if Dyrad is indeed in the top lane, but we will, of course, see if that is the case. But Gracchus vs. Kastin, Oriana, and Elise will be the band. Gracchus, Oriana, most likely going to be the king of, or the king and queens of the next meta as soon as they start banning out or rather nerfing all of the current mid laners. So Fizz and Kastin, again, are some of those mid laners who are incredibly strong at the moment. And Elise is, again, just kind of a generous pick. I know that um, Broken Shard feels that she's essentially the best jungler or one of the better junglers and does Lee Sin's job better. So maybe that's one of the reasons, personal preference and all that. Yeah, I mean, his staple junglers right now are Elise, Lee Sin and Jarvan. Those are his go-to champions. So it's going to be interesting to see with Jarvan and also Lee Sin being available. Uh, assuming, of course, that Renekton is locked in first for Ant Gaming, if he will opt for one of those other two junglers. But yeah, Elise is very strong. We saw it in the last game as well. And honestly, looking at those banned champions, Pulse, this is something that you see 9 out of 10 times in solo queue. I mean, these are categorized as some, if not the best champions in League of Legends right now. So they're all just being pushed to a side and saying, nope, don't want any of them. Absolutely, and now we see the Renekton coming in, we saw that last game, and Renekton is again just a very solid pick, he has a lot of good matchups, and even if he has a bad matchup, he generally does well anyway, and he can go for Brutalizer, he can go for a more damage orientated build, switch into the classic Sunfire Cape and just be that farming bot, and then go for the team fight, or even carry on split pushing, he's very versatile. Meanwhile, Broken Shard picks up Lee Sin, kind of not a surprise at all, now waiting for the next pickup from Mozilla. But Lee Sin kind of signifies that they want to get some early ganking pressure out and then convert into more of a, a CC bot. Not a complete CC bot, but doesn't offer all that much damage later on into the game. As Mozilla swaps between Zillion and Heimerdinger. <laughs> if this was World Finals, you'd have a crowd chanting and cheering, but unfortunately, not really the same thing when it's being live streamed. Indeed. Aatrox makes a lot more sense, and that is going to get locked in. Yeah, Atrox are very good in the top lane, very good in mid lane or even the jungle, uh, one of those ambiguous picks. And honestly, a lot of bruisers have that quality about them. They can go practically anywhere that isn't AD carry or support. So, not really sure that's going to go just yet. I would expect top lane. Again, it could be Lee Sin going in the top lane, we don't know. But Broken Shard, more uh, comfortable, I feel, on the Lee Sin pick. So, I would kind of expect that. Meanwhile, swapping between a couple picks on the team of Ant. And to go through Ari and Nocturne, which are their current pickups. Very mobile, Ari has been locked in, considered to be one of the strongest mid laners at the moment, and has not been banned out. Yeah, plus with all of the champions that have also been eliminated, Ari does make a lot of sense because she is, as you say, top tier mid laner material right now. Going to be interesting to see how Eternity do indeed try and counteract that one. We have seen Aatroxes in mid before, that's not completely out of question, but I don't think Aatrox fares too well against Ari, so I would not expect to see that being the case. I'd expect to see Mozilla running the Aatrox at top. Yeah, Vi will in fact be locked in for the jungle role, and now waiting to see what Eternity bring to the table. Still looking for their AD carry support, and potentially mid lane as well. And honestly, Messers, what do you feel that they could bring out here? I mean, they have a pretty good front line at the moment, they can just start to bring out more damage, or do you think they need more CC? 
I think CC is pretty important because we saw it in the last game. You were mentioning as uh, from a jungler's perspective yourself that Lee Sin couldn't really do a great deal because there wasn't a lot of CC to work with in lanes. So I do feel that if Eternity go with some hard CC in their lanes, then Broken Shard, we all know him as a very, very strong jungler, is going to be able to capitalize on that. So I would expect to see some more CC coming in. I know that Darker plays an incredibly good thrash, so it could very well be on the cards. Annie as a pickup, we saw Tabe running this a lot in World Finals as a support champion, but Ali typically does pretty well against Ari in mid as well, so it's another one of those versatile picks. Yeah, and uh, now returning in in uh, in in kinds, we do have Anne bringing out the Teemo. Uh, as you said, if we have a crowd behind us, messes all the cheering would be happening. <laughs> but uh, Annie again, as you said, she's got a very good early game in the mid lane against a lot of mid laners. Her uh, auto attack range is very good for that. Also, the zoning control with the fear from uh, from Pyromania. So at the same time, could be mid lane most likely going to be in that support role as we've seen uh, people picking up the Annie support after we did see it from the Chinese meta. Now hovering over the Urgot, don't really expect to see that, but could be locked in. Still another 20 seconds on the timer, so not got anything really to worry about. So, most likely looking for the mid laner from Eternity. Not too many options open, I'm looking, in fact, so five out of the six bands were mid laners, and the one that you were kind of expecting to come out would be Ari. so doesn't leave a lot of uh, room there. Could see a Lissandra. Alessandra yeah, is definitely possible, and they're going through a, a, a plethora of AD carries before locking in the Ezreal. This is kind of a, a staple bot lane from Season 2, if you remember. It was pretty much always locked in. It was either Sona or Tarek. So that's a lot of burst damage at 6, a lot of harassment as well going in, which is nice against Corky because he is quite a close-ranged AD carry, and a, a caster as well. He likes to get the Phosphorus Bomb and try and spam and harass you. So Sona's very good against Corky and can lock him down. They're going to be going for the last pick here. Now, this is pretty much going to tell us what the situation is going to be with Annie. I would not expect to see Lucian locked in. I'm going to be honest with you here, Pulse. I think <laughs> it's going to be their mid or support. At least that's what I'm hoping. Uh, Lucian mid, I have no idea if that works, honestly. Never seen it. In terms of AP ratios, I would doubt it. Uh, his ultimate still doesn't really do enough damage to make that viable, but I definitely like the Ezreal pick along with Sona. It, it kind of matches them beat for beat uh, when it comes to different stages in the game. You know, like in the early game, he should be able to match the damage of Corky. Mid game, the same sort of thing, and has the same sort of transition into late game. At the same time, either of these AD carries could choose for a more late game orientated build. They could go for, you know, what a standard AD carry build, I guess you could say, kind of like a Caitlyn or a Tristana would build, but it will be Leona locked in, so that's an Annie mid. It is an Annie mid, and as I say, Annie does pretty well against Ari because Ari's like hyper mobile, and he's like, no, I've got a stun. There you go, and now Tibbs is on your face and you're dead. There's not a great deal you can do about that. I really like the Leona pick in conjunction with the Aatrox and also Annie because they have a lot of CC, and it, once that solar flare drops down, the amount of burst damage that's going to follow up is going to be ridiculous. And this is a kill lane as well. Leona Corky is not exceptionally strong because of the amount of armor shred they have. Going into level 2 or 3, if Darker can catch Sona unawares, they will get a kill on Sona. They have very, very strong combination, and Sona is one of the squishiest supports, in fact, the squishiest champions at level 1. Until we get into the game, guys, we will be jumping to a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we will see both of these teams go head-to-head, -head, which will be Ant and Eternity. We will see you very soon.
Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Riot International Invitational with Ant and Eternity. I am Pulse and I am joined by Metas. Hey Pulse, hey viewers, how is it going man? This is our final game of the day actually, which I'm quite sad about, but we do have plenty more action to come up the rest of this week, but how are you feeling about this game? Yeah, it looks to be very interesting. We don't have all that much information on Ants as we haven't really cast them before. But Eternity, again, running a new lineup. But we know all these players individually and know them to be very, very solid. And uh, at least for the early game, we should probably talk for a little bit about if they're going to go for those level 1 fights. We have the group up from Ants, so maybe they're going to aggress onto that red buff. However, Wood has gone down into that burst, so they will see if they pass into that... Uh, that sort of jungle entrance. Meanwhile, Eternity look for the invade themselves onto red and we could see a buff switch. I would have to say though, at level 1, in a straight up 5v5 brawl, I would heavily favour Eternity. You look at their CC compared to the team of Ant. Annie already has a stun, you've got the Dark Flight from Aatrox, potential shield of Daybreak as well from Leona. Dark has yet to pick a, a first spell by the way, but very very smart stuff coming in here. And actually they're stood on top of a ward, so if Mozilla feels like it, he can Dark Flight in right now. It's exactly what he's done, Charm comes instantly out right now, so you've got all 10 players trying to smash each other about the back of the head. Mozilla's passive has been popped off, here comes the Ignite as well on Broken Shard. So many different focuses coming down, now Nardis is trying his best to clean this one up. He's got the first blood, is being taken out courtesy of Rutzel's Ezreal. Here comes the Zenith Blade from Leona. Will be picking up that double kill. Three to one straight away. So much action. Five players have now fallen. Flash coming out from Renekton. Trying his best to run away. Here comes Broken Shard from the side. Has been ignited, however. Will be picking up the pieces. And what about that for an opening? Six kills in the first two minutes. Wow, that's more kills than we saw in the last game, uh, in the first, like, 20. So, in the first two minutes, we'll be ten times faster. And what an explosive start. Two kills onto Annie, one onto Corky, and another onto the top lane of Mozilla. So, Eternity in very good shape, and another two kills, however, onto Rutzel, which will be their AD carry on Ezreal. So, in fact, in the bot lane, they have a slight advantage. Yeah, they do, and I was saying this though, going into the straight up 5 versus 5, Eternity were stronger, and they kind of proved that point. Yes, they got Aatrox's blood well almost instantly popped, but afterwards, you were having to deal with so much CC and so much damage as well. But, as you say, double kill on Rutzel is going to be very nice, however, Nadia's got the first blood and two assists, so both of them going to be coming back into lane with those double Doran's blades. However, Darker has hit level 2 first, and I was... Speaking about this, level 2, it's always a danger against the Corky Leona. Looks like it's not quite going to be enough damage, though. Yeah, Darker takes some hits in return, but should be good to go. Still is in better shape than Luca Blight. But this is what we were talking about in the break matters. They're, if they can engage on them, then they're just going to die. And Sona almost instantly popped because they have so much burst damage. In return, though, if Darker misses the Zenith Blade, which is fairly unlikely to happen. But if he does, then Sona can start to be aggressive. She can get some poke down and maybe get it to the stage where Darker go can't go for the initiate. Leona lanes are like this. If Leona can initiate, if she has enough health, she can initiate. If she doesn't, then she can't. But she always always has that threat. If she uses the Zenith Blade, then Sona has a 10 second ish window of opportunity while the Zenith Blade is down. Yes, absolutely. I will come back onto that point in a few moments, but Broken and Dyrad have but heads here. One versus one is going to suddenly become a two versus two. Lots of damage. Here comes Mozilla from the side. They're going to be picking up one kill. And Maracras is. Fairly scary, so after that kill, Eternity are forced to back on off. But Vi's double buffs will be going at to uh, Broken Shot actually there, and also Mozilla. So it's just gone from bad to worse. Not only do you have Mozilla on a two for zero scoreline pulls, but now he's got double buffs as well. Very very scary. What I was going to say before is it's very similar to playing against characters like Blitzcrank and Thrash. That when they're Big playmaking abilities are on cooldown. If they have missed as a Sona Ezreal lane, you have free license to be aggressive for about 10 to 15 seconds. I think that's what they're going to look for here, Rutzel. But again, Sona's been caught. This time may not be as lucky. Look at how much damage is put down. In fact, does survive by the skin of her teeth, but has already chugged through those health potions. So it's going to have to be super passive for the next 20 or 30 seconds. 
Yeah, Docker now has all his cooldowns back up and another, well, minute on his flash so he can't make a flash play, but it's enough fear to just push them back and make it very difficult for Rustle to poke himself or even to farm. It will get to that stage. If the wave was pushed back, then there would be no way he could even get anywhere near. It would be zoning time for Darker. Even so, that's not going to happen. In the top lane, no double buff Mozilla can farm all day. This is really nasty for Renekton. I mean, Renekton, if he was going to do anything in that lane, it would be early game because... Uh, well, Zareth will get to the stage where he will probably out-trade him and more damage comes on, but the double buff Mozilla is looking good. He's also got the blood well passive. He does, and it's just so scary. Dark Flight comes in, and the Ignite, that's going to be all she wrote. And the Ignite was popped right at the death as well from Renekton. Something we haven't mentioned yet is Annie. So Ziv is in mid, got the double kill at the level 1 brawl. Now Broken Shard going in deep. Charm has landed. He's still chasing after with that red buff. Constantly slowing down, but he's actually isolated himself away from Annie. So Ward jumping back towards Annie there, and should be okay. However, Annie is now coming in hard on Stud. Stud with very little little HP remaining, nice charm landing off there, and the Orb of Deception is not going to be enough to deter Annie though, because Stud has absolutely no health, flashing through, looking for the kill, but that is going to be Annie on the killing spree, 3 and 0, very scary stuff. Almost amazing, but not quite, and burnt the flash in the process, so not really in good shape. Annie in an even better position, 3, 0 and 2, she's running very quickly going to get to the point where Mewana Botley have to initiate. Yeah, Russell getting caught from another Zenith Blade, and you can see the difference between these two supports right now. They're winning the war, the uh, ward war, I should say, easy for me to say, with that pink ward. So Sona cannot see when Leona's firing in the Zenith Blades. So you can also see that because Sona's been forced to spam away all of those abilities just to heal herself up, she's very, very low on mana. Again, this is favoring Darker, who's just hit level 5. If they can hit 6 before Leona and Ezreal, watch for the all in engage bot lane. Now, right now we see a lot of Doran's items coming in from Eternity. They're really looking to push home the advantage they built up early and just make sure that they build up the momentum. Meanwhile, on the mid lane we have the Annie. Tim is coming down. Oh my lord. There was no chance to even cast. That was just burst damage at its finest and that is why Annie does so well against Ari. You do not allow her the strength of mobility when Tibbers is landing on your head and being stunned in conjunction with that. Yeah, and the reason Annie has actually come back, not only as a support, but also in mid lane, people have just realised Annie actually does a lot of burst damage. And as people realise that, well, the classic mid laners are going to be nerfed next patch, why not go to other mid laners who are probably just as strong? 60 CS to 21, massive differential, and generally you would say a lane is near lost if you had that differential, but not only that, she's four kills up on Ari as well. So it's not only can she just one-on-one -on -one Ari anytime she wants, but in a team fight she's going to be way, way more useful. Absolutely, and the two assists as well. Two junglers are going to be battling once again. Vi does have the level advantage, but let's have a look at the goal difference. We're talking about numbers, so Ari has 1.7k, Annie has 3.6. That's a big differential in mid at 8 minutes. Yeah, you don't have to be a mathematician to realise that that's quite a lot of gold, and will be in that Annie is way stronger than everyone on the map. Therefore, they'll be able to go for objectives, they can go for dragon, they can go for buffs, and there's very little that Annie can do about it. They'll have the base damages, but honestly, I don't think that's enough at this stage. Already, players are able to itemize, and that's very scary. Eight minutes, she's got a measly large rod and two Doran's rings, and still has 500, nearly 600 gold in her back pocket, and still has to be very careful. Oh my lord, that, that's just one Q, just... The one disintegrate from Annie, chunking down about a quarter of the hit points, has the blue buff as bot well, lane. and a two level, two level advantage, and bot lane is what we were talking about before, Pulse. If you allow Leona and Corky to hit level 6, that's never mind uh, the Broken Shard came down for the gank, they are going to rip through Sona. And this is the, the kind of scary factor that I was mentioning in Champion Select, that Sona's a good pick with Ezreal, but against Leona, you're going to get crushed alongside the Corky. Yeah, now we have to look at kind of contingency plans for Ant Gaming. What do they have on their board that they can deal with this huge momentum play coming in from Maternity? And the answer is very, very little, because everyone is doing well. Maybe the bot lane, you can make an argument for Ezreal potentially snowballing. If anyone's going to carry you for the rest of the game, it's going to be your AD carry. But they're going to have to put so much focus on Ezreal. 
They, they are, and it's so difficult right now because he's been fairly zoned. In fact, in mid lane, now they are going to be looking to get that shot down in effect. However, Ani is turning the tables. His broken shot from the side, safeguarding, giving that shield, and look at the damage from Ani with the ignite goes unstoppable. So what looked like a pretty good situation, suddenly the tables are turned, and they pick up the fifth kill for Ani. And they have to be so careful with going for ganks at all, because Broken Child having such a good early game doesn't have to have any fear of going toe to toe with Vi. Vi has very bad matchups in the first couple of levels, and a lot of the strong junglers right now can beat her one on one. We saw that at the top lane, even if um, even if we had Mozilla coming down or without him coming down, Lee Sin would have won in the in the long run because Vi has more bursts if she gets to charge up her Vault Breaker. But apart from that, she doesn't really have it. In the top lane, we look for the gank. Yep, Broken Shaw jumping in with the Tempest and Cripple. Rakraz is trying his best to escape, but here comes the Massacre. The Q, the Resonating Strike, and Sonic Wave will land. And Broken Shard gets his 007 James Bond. So he has been all over the map. Speaking of ganks, here comes Darker actually into mid, forcing the flash from Stud with the solar flare coming down. But there is no escape from Stud. He's already popped his flash. Here comes his Zenith Blade, Shield of Daybreak. And Ari's day just gets a whole lot worse. And this is momentum. They didn't need to start going for their big items. They just needed to go for Doran's items. So in any scenario, even two versus three, they could still come out on top with the levels advantage, the item advantage, because they are so efficient. And they're now 10 kills ahead. Bot lane will be sieging in, and Rustel has a slight advantage on Nardius, but with Darker heading down once again, we won't have all the cooldowns that he really wants. But Wave Clear says he's not going to be taking my tower anytime soon. Pulse, um... This is pretty scary, dude. DFG for Annie at 11 minutes through the game. Yeah, that means Ari cannot even come back into her lane. She can yeah. farm a turret, and that's kind of it. As soon as Annie has her flash, then she's dead. Top lane, Rene Renekton had to pull off some pretty funky moves even to get back to his turret, which has now fallen, and now Mozilla can kill him. He does have Dominus up, however, but I'm not too sure it's going to be enough damage to really scare Aatrox away. He does have the Bloodwell up on top of that, so he's able to just Dark dark Flight, I should say, away and just completely fine. But DFG Annie mid is just brutal. There is no two ways about it. Lee Sin is looking for more ganks, has the Boots of Mobility coming to bot lane. Rutzel was caught from the Sonic Wave, but not going to be following it up with the Resonating Strike. I think we just saw Tibbers miss, but I'm not going to comment on that, and Stud kind of walks out of the lane. Lee Sin also <laughs> coming up, and Vi also finds him there, but there's no way Vi can trade against him, so has to walk away from her own jungle, and he's still looking for the kill, though. Tibbers looking very scary as the minions are in hot pursuit. Not a Q comes down, chunking Ari as she backs on off. Dyrad walks back into his jungle, hoping that Lee Sin is gone, and gets a nice 15 gold from these minions. Yep, here comes Darker from the side, however, Zenith Blade coming in, Blight is going to be stunned down, so much damage. Solar Flare comes round from the back, forcing Luca to walk back towards the Tower of Eternity. Rutzel forced to flash away. So we were talking before, in fact, at top lane, you've got Aatrox chasing after Renekton, who, remember, does have his Dominus on cooldown. That's going to be Massacre picking up the pieces. The two mid laners are now coming head to head. Global action throughout. Spirit Rush popped off. Is it going to be enough damage? Here comes the auto attack, and it will take down Ari. Wowzers, that was long range. Now, Broken is re-engaging back on at Rutzel. We'll be forced to back on off, though. Yeah, and there's no conceivable scenario where, honestly, I see Ant winning this game. It's a very difficult start to come back from, especially when you were two kills down and all of your lanes were in a disadvantage, but then it just went bad from worse. They had a better team for capitalizing and gaining momentum. Lee Sin will just constantly gank, keep those lanes doing well. Vi can only really counter gank, and she can't really do too much to Lee Sin, and she lost a double buff early game. And if you lose double buff early game as Vi, that will hurt you way more more than many other jungles, such as Jarvan, such as Lee Sin. So everything was just already losing. And yes, Ezreal's 2-0, I mean, that's pretty good, pretty decent scoreline, but not when the rest of the team have already died 15 times. Just across the board, though, Hulse, we've been putting a lot of the props, a lot of the praise on Annie, because she is 7-0 and zero and is doing so much burst damage, but at the same time, Aatrox has a Blade of the Rune King, he's 5-0. and zero. Corky already has a Trinity Force finished off, so across the board, they're strong. It's not a case that Annie is just carrying everybody on, on her shoulders. Everyone is chiming in here, and I've got to say, my first impressions of this Eternity lineup are really good. I can see them going all the way in this tournament. They've just looked really strong from the first minute. 
I'm really excited to see how the next season goes, Metas, because look at some of the new lineups we've seen from some of these teams. It turns here looking really good. Yes, Broken Charles is going to go as well, but meanwhile in the mid lane. Oh, well, my I would, God. I would pass it over to you, Metas, but <laughs> honestly, what's the point? Well, that's just Annie. I mean, that's all you can really say. Annie burst damage. It's a thing. It is. And me on the bot lane, they're trading off again, and Sona is trying to do minimal damage, but at any point in time, Darker could just make a play, land the Zenith Blade, and one of them's going to die. And uh, meanwhile, on the top lane, Dyred kind of walks himself around, but I'm not convinced that they'll win one versus two. I mean, they're going to give it a good shot, though. They certainly will, but Aatrox has Blade of the Rune King and also Bloodwell, so Mozilla's in a really strong position. And you can almost sense that Dyrad knows that bot lane Sona is flashing up red again. And Darker is just stamping his authority. Meanwhile, a top lane Aatrox goes one on one versus Renekton and comes out ahead with the Bloodwell passive that I mentioned previously. Here comes Zivis in the bot lane right now on Annie. That's going to be a legendary 9 and 0, 2 to 19, 17.4k to 29.1 after 15 and a half minutes. I honestly think Pulse is maybe one of the most one sided games I've ever casted. It's a little unfortunate because Ant really haven't done anything wrong. They just were at the disadvantage in the early game. They were re revealed by that perfect ward from Darker, and now they're just being picked up all over the board. Point, uh, case in point. Meanwhile, top lane, Broken Child picks up another kill onto Ari. Oh, this this is just brutal, man. I mean, we, we've said this before in previous casts, but this is e-bullying at its finest. This is stealing the lunch money and beating them up afterwards. Eternity are not relenting as well. They are constantly battering down these towers, making plays, and getting objectives off the back of them. And that's the sign of a truly good team, Pulse. A lot of teams will win team fights and then do nothing with it, but Eternity are snowballing this so, so fast. They are indeed, and Broken Shot finds himself another target to try and uh, completely destroy, but he might be called out here as he jumps back. Dyrad's still looking for this kill, and the Ezreal yes, Ultimate will pick that one up, bringing him to 3 and 1. Meanwhile, Zivic has found himself there and goes for the team fight. Can he go 1 versus 3 here, Metas? I don't think so. There is way too much damage and constant harassment coming down from Dyrad on also the Renekton. Maracra, he's, he's trying his best, but they do finally get their target. That's a 10 to 1 Annie. They shut down gold going on Renekton. But while all that was happening, Nardius was like, okay, you kill my Annie, I kill your inhib tower. And it is already flying towards half HP. Nardius forced to back away with Darker alongside him. So it's just one of those cases that, yes, they got the shutdown on Annie, but so what? They're still way, way behind. Yeah, and uh, well, Nardius, he's taking some damage, but he can just turn around and completely destroy Stud in return. So, in the top lane, they're going to go two versus one, but they can't do this forever. And with the 21 to 4 scoreline, it's not looking like this game will go on for too much longer. But as we were saying before, Messers, this is going to be a very interesting season. If Eternity keep on going, I mean, Broken Child will be moving to America uh, to join the other team with uh, uh, Robert X Lee, I think, and also West Rice. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And there's also Dignitas, who've got their new lineup looking very strong. So when the challenge is seen, I'm really excited to see how this one goes. Yeah, Dignitas brought in Alchemist, didn't they, for yeah. Cook My Sock. So there are some really interesting lineups coming about. Obviously, Copenhagen Wolves have had a couple of shuffles as well with Shook. In fact, hold the thought that because not by... Ah, that's just another dead Ari. Very, very quickly indeed. Massacre has been popped down, forced to flash away because the Bloodwell previously in the aforementioned battle with Renekton was popped. So Mozilla flashing back 7 and 0 is the only player on the battlefield who has yet to die. Yeah, and uh, now in the mid lane, they're starting to siege away. I mean, if, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say their team is really that great at sieging, but when you're this far ahead, it doesn't matter what you really do. You could have five Sorakas uh, at this point. If you're this far ahead, it doesn't matter. Like, you're, you're going to take these hours, honestly. Uh, the fact that they have an Annie who has Rabadon's Death Cap and Death Fire Grasp is terrifying in its own way. A uh, Broken Shard is mechanically a very gifted player, so he could potentially make the Insect plays uh, very much a reality if he so chooses, like he's about to do there. I thought he was going to do, but instead just jumped in and hopped back out again. Yeah, didn't have the minions to really be that buffer to allow them to uh, go all in on that fight. So, right now all they need to do is just chip away at the turret, don't do anything risky, and just win the game. Vi is taking a lot wow. of hits though. That was Vi who just got insta gibbed there from Annie. 100 to 0, literally. And Vi is the tankiest player on their team if you take Renekton out of the equation. So, that is sending alarm bells ringing. 
here as the inhib tower has just been picked up. They may be trying to engage on this one the first wow. time, which is just ridiculous. I can't even cast that. It's just a case of Annie sees Hero and she kills Hero, and that's GG. That was a Q and W, and that killed Ari, and another kill goes down in the top lane, 3-0. And we've not really had any team fights apart from the level 1 metas, and now they're just taking everything they own. Inhibitor goes down, exposed another inhibitor. Meanwhile, Rustel looked for the kill onto Nardia, onto Mozilla, I should say. And Nardius is just going to be saying, nope, I do not want any deaths for my top laner. You are going down. Annie is now looking for another kill, and we'll be picking it up onto Sona. I have to question, though, you, you hit the nail on the head thus far. I don't think there's too much point in, in getting... Uh, sidetracked by kills this game is is over there is no two ways about it so you know we, we said this at level one that we felt that eternity had the much stronger level one team fight with that being the case i'm amazingly surprised that ant would even attempt a level one fight because from there on in the game was pretty much lost any double kill and then the kill they picked up on viat top lane and from there on in it was just a snowball yeah, they were revealed by awards and then they got initiated on and they kind of felt that they have to play it out. They were like, okay, well, level 1's fairly decent, Renex and Vi, um, also Ari as well, but compare that to the insane burst damage from Eternity at level 1. It doesn't even compare. And then when they could just use Mozilla to sit in the front, soak up the damage, blood well, and then fight again, was one of the main turning points of this game. And, um, and in fact, we've got the Surrender Book coming in from the team of Ant, so that's the GD well played coming out, and fairly one-sided, I have to say, Metas. Yeah, I, th I think that's one way of saying it. 24k to 42 nearly k is a big difference at 20 minutes, and, you know, we were talking about the level 1 fight. You've got an Annie who was charging up the stuns with Incinerate, so that is actually an AoE spell that can and did stun 3 or 4 players. You got Leona, who can jump in with the Zenith Blade or Shield Daybreak, and the Dark Flight as well from Mozilla. Lots of burst damage, you say, a lot of CC. Whereas on the flip side, the only CC that's potentially going to come in is the charm from Ari and also the ruthless predator from Renekton. That's it. So in the team one level one fight, it's just going to go one way, and that's exactly what happened. They picked up the kills on the important characters as well. Uh, Nardius on Corky got first blood, so he went back into lane with double Doran's blades, and then you had an Annie who got a double kill, went back into lane with double Doran's rings. As we already said, Annie does very well against Ari, and when you add in a double kill and double Doran's rings, it just kind of escalates out of control. Yeah, that will bring today's broadcast to a close, uh, but tomorrow we have Dark Passage versus Team Dignitas UK and Millennium versus the winner of uh, whoever won Game C today, which was Eternity. So it will be Millennium versus Eternity tomorrow, and those will be two best of three, starting at 6pm UK time, which is DMT plus one, so uh, of course go to your respective time zones, but I was pulsed. I am joined by Metas, and now it's plugging time until we see ourselves off. Yes, indeedy. So what I would ask you guys to do if you have enjoyed the cast is go down to the bottom left of your screen and click the follow button. As I said before, this is day two, and I believe there are another three or four days at the very least of League of Legends coverage to come with some awesome, awesome teams. You definitely want to get liking that and following us here on the stream. If you enjoyed my casting, that's at in, uh, Metis TV. I nearly said at Impulsible there. Eh? Nice one. That's actually Pulse's Twitter. Indeed. Mine's at Metis TV. And if you enjoyed Pulse's cast, where can they find you, Pulse? Though I already kind of told them. Indeed, it's Twitter at Impulsible, or you can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash watchyourpulse. I'm also on YouTube, but I don't do too much over there, but you can follow me anyway. I might produce content at a time. But for that was it from us, Chaos TV, and everyone on the production crew, including Robin, our fantastic streamer for today. We will be back tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.